Hi everyone. <clears throat> Mary Dispresso Press Design. Welcome on this September 17th, 2024. Sorry, I just took a drink of coffee and <laughs> instead of helping it made things worse. <clears throat> But um, welcome. Today is a break, <clears throat> the final break in the 12 by 12s. And uh, we're going to make some spools. I don't have any new papers this week. Um, I'll get to the project in a minute. Just let me uh, share some exciting news and my thank yous and appreciation. Um, thank you to August, Lynn, Diane, Julian, R. Bolton, Bolton uh, Art Girl 233, Johnny, Jennifer, Baby Gatto, Janita, and Kat. I don't know if that's Gatto, like cat in Italian, or isn't that cat in Italian? Anyway, um, somebody loves the uh, wax paper laminate. Um, what did I call the first one? Vignettes, wax paper vignettes. And they demonstrated it in their own video. They were inspired by a brooch, an old, I don't know, I don't know if it was antique, but an old or vintage antique brooch, and um, they ran across that video, and they tried it, and they said they loved it, and they had success, and they had some great tips. So that was Patty and Debbie at Print and Pixel Studio. And, um, yes, that does remind me, um, uh, I knew there was something antique that it reminded me of, <clears throat> and someone in what in the comments in my video, it was either powder boxes or pill boxes, maybe, but I knew exactly what they were speaking of like from the 1930s or 40s maybe, but it reminded me of that um, the first time I did it as well. So anyway, they were inspired <clears throat> by a brooch pin, and uh, they are thinking of selling them in their shop. So maybe I should finally take the jump and do that too. <laughs> but. Um, some of the tips they preferred the Mod Podge, which I do think I demonstrate. I I did try try that as well, and maybe it was because, as they said, until it's completely dry, it gets cloudy. So maybe for that reason, I wasn't as happy with that method. But that's the method they chose, <clears throat> and. Um, it appears they're going to keep using that. So that, <clears throat> sorry, let me take a drink here and get back on a good voice. Um, they used the matte Mod Podge. <clears throat> and they use Yes Paste, which is something I've always wanted to try and haven't tried yet. And I think I might. So, um... And let me think if there's anything else. But anyway, I was so thrilled. They um, enabled it so I could get notified. That's how I saw it. And then they actually got my name right. And they put a link in their description. And I appreciate that so much. I, of course, I subscribed. and. Um, in a day or two, I will express my appreciation in their comments. After their video I has garnered enough views for them as 
you know, in the first initial um, public viewing, and you know, I'm going to be courteous and not intrude in their in their what's the word in their you know promotion, whatever. That's not the right word, but you know what I mean. And I'll um, express my appreciation to them. They really made my day. So um, today <clears throat> I had an easy project because <laughs> I'm exhausted. Okay, let me tell you about this a little as I can. Uh, my brother took a turn for the worse. I wish I could talk about it, but I can't. I have been moving his furniture out of his house. And I have two new dogs, neither of which we ever planned on having dogs again. One is old, half blind, diabetic, overweight. And the other one was a rescue by him who could never take the time to properly socialize her or, you know, train her because he's handicapped. I don't even know why he took her, except that someone talked him into it. And he felt sorry, and uh, the, the people that had him before him probably abused her. She was kept in a cage. So she's never been rehabilitate, rehabilitated. She's a beautiful dog. As I said in one of my other videos, she's absolutely beautiful. And I'm happy to say in less than four days, she has let me do things that she wouldn't let me do in three months out there. So we're happy about that. <clears throat> so anyway... I was so tired, but coming down here has been my salvation. So I have just been messing around with circles, <clears throat> and I came up with a few things that can be made using circle punches and circles. And that is these little spools. And I'm probably going to just show you the prototype here so that you can, uh, there's my little template. I'm going to show you how to make that. And then this was my first one. I'm a little nervous about this because this is going to be one of those things you either love or don't love. <laughs> and... <clears throat> Then I thought, you know what, I need a thread catcher because I can't stand it when the thread gets loose or the ribbon. So I came up with a little thread catcher. And this was my second one. And that's what we're going to be doing today. And then I made this group. And I've tried to... Um, use a few ideas of what you can use on circle do what you can make using circle punches as many as i can in this first day and then i have a few more at least one or two more videos to come but these were my second batch and i used um odd lots paper to come up with them and they have their own thread catcher and there's the back and I've been using mine. All this little thread was just lying around in my sewing box. Every time I got in my box, it drove me crazy. And then I have the odd little pieces of ribbon, things like that, that these can be used for because they're small. And then here is my last one that lace is a little too thick for that but i did it anyway so i used um i used odd lots paper for
for some of them. And today I'm going to use uh, grunge. I have one little strip left. Here you go. Grunge. One grunge lover and grunge lover. That's the little strip I have left. And I use that to make this one and cover these to get a head start. And I'm going to use Meadow. I think I have a couple pieces of Meadow here and I'm going to use that. I have some sticker paper. I have some breads. <clears throat> and I have some packaging. <clears throat> Sorry again. And you'll need some punches. I pretty much used my sander three and I did use one of my dies. My first one is one and a half. I think this is five eighths. And I think this is one. Did the number wear off there already? Yeah, yeah, this is one inch. Okay, so one and a half inch, one inch, and five eighths. But you use what you have. I wish I had a two inch circle punch. I really do. Actually, I wish I had a two and a half inch circle punch and a three inch circle punch. That would make my life ten times easier. So, I came up with this little standard size just just based on what I thought um, the circle would be proportional to the shape. Okay? I'm a little nervous about this. Yes. <laughs> I don't want anyone to think, oh, that's ugly or weird. And wait until I get till the next one, because we're also going to make some tiny ones. So the standard measurement I came up with was two by three. And I already have my two covered with paper. So the way I made this template is I just took my two by three packaging folded it in half each way. Now you might find it easier to draw a line because sometimes packaging doesn't make the neatest fold like a piece of paper does. So I will make a dotted line as well. To show you how I made this little template. And I have a box of little templates. Really the only one I need is the horizontal center. If you turn it on its long or turn it on its tall side. I just need that one really. And then you're going to take your little template, make sure you're on the outside, the open edge. And this is how you're going to get your um, mirror holes for the side of your spool, for the wraparound part of your spool. And then I'm just going to put it in my punch with the open edge toward the inside of the punch. And I'm going to get whatever depth I think is okay. Get that all lined up. Okay, please do this today. You did it yesterday. There we go. There's my little template. So that's easy enough. And then I did use my fanciest corner. Let me see if I can get something this will show up on. 
I did use my fanciest corners just because I wanted it to look pretty. But you can use any corner, your corner rounder or whatever. So I did use two of those fancy corners. And you can use whatever once you get to that part. Or just a uh, um, tag corner is fine. And you can keep these as simple or as decorative as you want. So let's do this one because it has some green. And then I just attach my template with a little clip. Got it lined up as best I can. Every time it seems it's a little different size, but that's okay. And then I just took either my white pen or marker, whatever, pencil. Trace that out. Like so. And got my punch. Okay. Hard to see that white on white. <laughs> I am really going to have to hold this up close because I can barely see it. Okay. So there we go. That's the basics. And then um, got my favorite punch. And put on some fancy corners. There we have it. Now hopefully, actually I don't. I'll just use one of these to get my little um, placement for my reinforcer. Now you don't have to do any of that. If you just want to use that as a basic spool, be my guest. But I added the little thread catcher. And I'm going to show you the simplest one. And you just put your glue on the top of the circle as if you're making a closure. And there you go. And you can either do it on the, you can glue the bottom and have the thread catch in the top, or you can glue the top and have the thread catch in the bottom. Um, this one I didn't think of it and I just used a little button type circle for an embellishment and then when I did think of it I put the catcher on the back made it a smaller circle same way just the top half of the circle is glued down and then I uh, that's another one. The top half is glued down and the threads are caught under the bottom. That's why I'm using, uh, this was one of my favorites. So I'm using the same papers. And then again, I used the little bow in the button, made it look more like a button. Knotted a little piece of rag in the front. And then I just did a stacked circle, gradated size. And then 
lastly, I came up with the um, policy closure type using a brad. And then I covered the um, brad in the back with another piece of pa pa meadow paper glued on a piece of craft sticker paper. So it was all about circles today. And I'm just going to finish this one up. Make one of these types of little circles. Not sure which one. Um, I think I'll do a Think. Where's my first one that I said I liked? I think I'll just do a simple like this today, except maybe I'll um, glue it on the bottom so I can catch the thread in the top. That way my circle won't be so hidden. So I think I'll do that. So then I'm just going to take some of this meadow paper. Um, that's too big. I need the one inch circle for this. Glue that on a piece of packaging. find a pretty pretty grouping here. This punch. This punch is getting a dull edge. And actually it's newer than my other one. And I'm gonna use my quick dry glue today. <clears throat> but be aware when you're making these you can use your cheapest glue. <laughs> whether it's Elmer's, Dollar Tree, whatever. But because I want this to dry fast, I'm using my good glue. My, oh, I always forget the name of it. Linico. It's my good book binding glue. Dries fast, just as good as glitter glue. Okay, there's my flower. And then, what did I do? I went in my little, uh, I thought I actually chose pinks. Yesterday, I made a little on some little dots. <clears throat> Just let me get up and get my box of pre-made reinforcers. Sorry. Technical failure. <laughs> Technical failure. I was hoping to make two of these and we're already at 30. So I already have, I have pre-made everywhere. I have a whole bunch. That's not going to work. Um, that'll work. Good enough. Okay, then it has a wrinkle. 
I think I'm going to um, go around that with the pen. As I go around this one. And I chose all silver, so might as well stick with silver. And this is Deco Color by Uchida Oil Based Metallic Chisel Edge. And I have silver and gold. And I think my silver is actually running out. This is another one of those finds I can't live without. Because I don't like to ink everything. Sorry, I had to go around some places twice. Okay. Oh, I wanted to do that too. So I'm going to glue the bottom half of this. So that the ribbon catches in the top. Miss the spot. Okay, so this dog, I can't believe she gave me a kiss yesterday. She'll come up. She wants she wants petted. And I'm just going to position that about right there, <clears throat> kind of in the lower center space of that. And then I'm going to let that dry. Cut a piece of twine, about, probably about eight inches. And then show you the next one. Let me get something wound around there. I probably better let it dry. In my round spools, I put a little cut in the rim like a little slice and that's how I keep the loose end. I can't stand those loose ends coming apart and then they mess up your whole box of ribbon. But as I said, I'm just <clears throat> using these to get rid of all of this little spare ribbon. What can I put? I'm looking for one a little longer. Oh, this will be good. Okay. And then, actually the first piece doesn't even need to go in the thread catcher because it can be held in place by the other ribbon. And that lady one, I wish I would have moved her face up a little bit. I wanted, it didn't end up how I wanted. I was hoping just to get her eyes above the ribbon. So she was peeking over it. Mm -hmm. 
but then as I was looking um, to see if I could have swore I saw some antique ones kind of looking like the next ones I'm going to show you. So I'm doubly nervous about that one. So there we go. Here's my little spool and my little um, <clears throat> thread catcher. And that's two. <clears throat> I'll probably replace that lace with ribbon for the photo and I'll use these for the photo but I really wanted her eyes to be peeking up okay so I'll probably make the other one of this style off camera and I'm just going to show you the template for the other one and make one more <clears throat> and then I'll make a set of three new ones for the photo. So I'm going to show you the big one. And this one you're either going to laugh at. <laughs> I hope you don't laugh, but it's like this. If you're going to say it looks like an apple core, I don't know. But I think I've kind of seen people making little dresses doing something like this. So I came up with, I used my die for this one. And I don't have that size circle punch, so I'm not going to use it. Came up with the little one. <coughs> I pretty much did it the same way. Folded it in half. <coughs> took the one inch punch and made an edge and then traced it, punched it out, and that's my little template. So that's what I did. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat's gone. It's cold upstairs and warm down here. <clears throat> So, um, fast dry glue. Oh, let me show you them actually. Now you can use these as an embellishment. And I just put some yarn on them. And I use another little floral paper. And I put the little thread catcher on the back. But actually, what you can do is just tie it. Here's another little one. I put the bulb pin, put the little tiny circle thread catcher in the back. But I don't know if it's necessary for these because these will probably, I mean, of course, you can make them to store your own little embroidery floss or whatever. But I don't know that they necessarily need a thread catcher if you don't want to make one. And since they're so tiny, I put it in the back. So I just took my little one and a half inch another thing you can do is you can make a circle put a small circle in the back also on packaging make a little more depth and then that that ribbon would sit nice more nicely in there instead of being bulky probably okay 
just want to make sure that it's dry enough. I don't want the same problem happening. Okay, I did the same thing. Just put my little template on there. Um, decide which one you want on the front. Uh, let me get gray for this so I can see it. Traced it out and then went slightly beyond the line so I could punch that line out. And then took my one inch punch Follow the line. It's a little tricky. Follow the line. Punch. And I'm afraid you're going to say that looks like an apple core. <laughs> but oh well. It's utilitarian and it is actually cute. You could put some little lace on the bottom. You could try to make it a little dress if you want. <clears throat> then went in there, punched a little hole. Put a little piece of twine. I'm just going to keep it the same length because it's easier to make a knot. I'm going to get my homemade noodle, homemade noodle, homemade needle for this so it goes faster. This is twine. What's the word? It comes undone. And frays really fast. Even though I love it, it's my favorite. It's my go to string. I should get my <clears throat> blue a little closer. Okay, I don't know what I'm going to wrap around here. I didn't think about it. I don't have any more embroidery thread. I'll just use this little tiny ribbon. And I'm probably just going to tie it. Let me make sure I get enough. And then the other thing I put on here is my little scrap fabric ribbon lace box is a disaster. It always gets so stuffed. This would probably be a great help. This might be a little long for an embellishment, but I'm just going to tie it in a knot in the back. And you get your little bulb pens. I'm tying a knot because me and small bows don't go together. Here we go. 
you can hang that in a little journal hang a charm from it hang a charm from the ribbon that would be a cute little embellishment and what else was I just going to do now I forgot okay so I'll make the final one of these. Oh, I'm just going to take off that bulb pin. Oh no, actually I had a bulb pin on those. I put a, I put a twine. So either way, either way you want it, just keep it like that. Get these three out here. So I use some. Um, I used Odd Lots, I used Meadow, and actually I used Relics. In my prototype, I just used whatever scraps I could find. So, that's pretty much it, you guys. And I just thought of another circle one for holding thread in my head. I'm going to have to try to remember to write that down for another project because that's how it goes, right? You do one thing and one thing leads to another. And then, a little template and a little circle template. And remember, you can make these any size you want. It depends on your punch because you want to get them, you want to get the circle proportionate. That's how, that's how I felt. So I just went <clears throat> three times, yeah, three times, this, about three times the size of the punch. And that's how I came up with that. So, okay, I hope you like it and, um, I'll see you next time, everyone. Thanks for your time. Bye.